Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen and in today's video we are answering the question why was Emory Tate so good at chess? If you haven't heard about Emory Tate he was the father of Andrew and Tristan Tate famous internet celebrities and he was a really good chess player both Tristan and Andrew speak really high of him and truly he was a really good chess player I selected two of his games, in my opinion his best games and you will see why he was so good at chess and I think you will be able to learn a lot about chess from his games so without further ado we will go straight to his chess games. This first game was played in 2001 and Emory Tate was playing with white pieces and he opened the game with e4, black replied with c5 and we are in Sicilian defense, game continued with knight f3 for Emory, d6 for black, d4 for Emory Tate, c takes on d4 and knight takes on d4 and this is so called open variation of the Sicilian defense, black continues with knight f6 and white plays knight c3. A6 was played for black with the idea to protect this b5 square, white continues with bishop c4 and e6 was played for black, normal developing moves, white plays bishop b3, his idea is simple, he wants to save a tempo because black will eventually push b5 here to grab the control of the center which just happened in the game, b5 was played for black and Tate now plays bishop g5 with the idea to pin this black knight, h6 was played for black and right now Emory Tate plays bishop h4. Bishop e7 was played for black to unpin this knight of course and now Emory Tate plays queen f3, his idea is to aim at this black rook which is for now undefended, black continues with queen c7 and now white plays castle queenside, game continued with knight b to d7 but now I wanted to show you the line you probably saw after queen c7 what would happen if white immediately played e5 then the game would continue with d takes on e5, queen takes this rook, e takes on d4 so black now captures this knight bishop g3 for white is the best move attacking this queen, e5 for black, knight d5 offering trade and attacking the queen, black is forced to take, queen takes on d5 and after bishop d6 the position is equal although white has a pawn up by the computer evaluation here so that would be the end of that line I just wanted to show you in case you were wondering, our game continued with knight b to d7 and Emory Tate now plays rook h to e1 here taking the advantage of the semi-open file, perfectly normal move and black now plays knight c5, his idea is simple, he wants to remove this dangerous white squared bishop and now white already strikes his attack with knight f5. Now taking this white knight is not a good option and I will now show you why, so in case black decides to take this knight then the game would continue firstly with bishop takes on f6 and after knight takes on b3 with check, a takes on b3, Black is forced to play bishop b7 because if he doesn't for example if he takes this with his bishop then we have e takes on f6 with a check and this rook will fall, if you want to save your rook you have to play bishop e6 but then we will simply pick up your bishop and we will be a lot better in this position so that is the reason why bishop b7 is forced, then white continues with bishop takes on g7, rook g8, bishop takes on h6, f takes on e4, knight takes on e4 and castle queenside for black and this is the end of the line and as you can see from the position white is doing much better here and that is the reason why taking this knight immediately is not the best option so our game continued firstly after knight f5 with knight takes on b3 check, a takes on b3 and e takes on f5 for black was played, now white again continues with the same bishop takes on f6 and we cannot take with the bishop I showed you previously why, g takes on f6 and right now white immediately strikes with knight d5 attacking this queen here, queen is forced to retreat and Emory Tate plays knight takes on e7, black is now forced to take with his king, in case black decides to take with his queen we have this move and black's queen is pinned and we will take his queen and we will win the game, so that is the reason why king e7 was played, the game continued the same, e takes on f5 check, bishop e6 is forced because you want to save your rook, your rook is under attack, if you move your king anywhere else or you just put your queen we will grab your rook here for free, so that is the reason why bishop e6 was played and after f takes on e6, f takes on e6, it seems like black survived this position, material is equal but unfortunately for black white has a strong attack with queen b7 check and right now black makes a mistake with queen d7 and after rook takes on e6 which is an amazing move black decided to resign because there is nothing he can do, his queen is lost, if he takes this rook then we play rook e1 check and whenever the king goes for example here we simply take his queen and if after rook e6 check black king decides to go somewhere like here then we simply take his rook here and there is no way of stopping the checkmate for example black can try and pick it up, rook takes on d6, king e8, queen d7 check, king f8, rook takes on f6 check, king g8 
and queen f7 is the checkmate so that is the reason why black resigned and as you can see really nice tactical idea by emory tate and a really clean execution so a really fun game and we will now go to the next one in the second game emory tate was playing with black pieces and his opponent opened the game with c4 english opening emory tate replied with d6 game continued with knight c3 and e5 for black this is the english opening and the reverse sicilian variation of the english opening knight f3 for white g5 for black right now black's idea is to attack this knight white now plays d4 now this pawn is hanging and black is forced to play g4 best line for white is knight g1 and black continues with bishop g7 all of these were book moves white continues with d takes on e5 and bishop takes on e5 for emory tate white now strikes with e4 and black replies with f5 counter attacking in the center game continued with e takes on f5 queen e7 first intermezzo move because right now you're preparing a lot of tricks on this king that is exposed that is the reason why white is forced to play knight g to e2 and right now emory tate decided that it was a good idea to double the pawns of the white so he plays bishop takes on c3 check in order to pick up this bishop you have to use your pawn because your king is pinned b takes on c3 and bishop takes on f5 for emory tate game continued with bishop e3 for white normal developing move and you finally want to get rid of this nasty pin on your knight black now played knight c6 and white continues with knight g3 putting the knight on a much better square and right now attacking this bishop emory tate doesn't want to give up his bishop right now so he plays bishop d7 our game continued with bishop e2 for white slowly preparing for a castle and also attacking this pawn here that is the reason why emory tate played h5 to protect this pawn and also later in the game he will advance his pawns as well this is one of the ideas behind this move white continues with queen c2 because this diagonal is weak and these light squares are weak for black black now wants to castle as soon as possible and he does that in the next move and right now white immediately counterattacks with knight f5 right now this queen is under attack and this knight is looking really good on this f5 square that is the reason why emory tate still doesn't want to exchange his bishop and he plays queen f7 here the game continued with knight d4 for white and right now knight g to e7 was played for black putting the last undeveloped piece in the game and white now plays castle kingside black continues with knight f5 right now emory tate wants to get rid of this knight on this strong d4 square knight takes on f5 bishop takes on f5 right now this queen is under attack and white plays bishop d3 emory tate accepts this trade and he plays bishop takes on d3 queen takes on d3 and black now plays h4 a really important move you will see it later in the game why this was so important so white continues with rook a to b1 grabbing the advantage of this open b file emory tate decided that there is not enough attackers and he plays h3 here another really important move you will see later why white doesn't want to trade obviously because he doesn't want to open the g file pushing your pawn on g3 is also really bad because right now after g3 we have knight e5 and you are forced to put your queen here because you want to protect this square and after queen f3 if you trade after knight f3 check king h1 the only way you can remove your knight from here is to sacrifice your rook for it and this is a completely lost position for black so that is the reason why pushing the pawn on g3 wasn't a good option as well that is the reason why after h3 queen d5 was played white wants to exchange the queens because if the queens are left on the board for example after h3 if you play something else for example like rook to d1 if we trade you pick with your king and now after queen h5 the situation is getting really dangerous this knight will fall in on the e5 and your king will be very weak that is the reason why white decided to trade the queens as soon as possible so after queen d5 emory tate refused the trade and he played queen e8 and right now white finds a nice move queen f5 check and right now this pawn is hanging this forces emory tate to play queen d7 and after queen takes on d7 rook takes on d7 bishop d4 was played for white right now this rook is under attack and after this move emory tate played rook h5 our game continued with rook f to e1 right now taking the advantage of this open e file and after this move emory tate plays knight e5 he wants to close this open e file and he practically forces white to take this knight here because it's really strong game continued with bishop takes on e5 rook takes on e5 and king f1 was played for white obviously you don't want to trade the rooks right now because white will simply grab the space on e file that is the reason why rook d to e7 was played and right now white is practically forced to pick this rook rook takes on e5 rook takes on e5 and rook d1 was played for white even with rooks off the board this is a much favorable endgame for black and black is winning here that is the reason why white doesn't want to trade his rooks 
Game continued with c5, Emoritate's idea is simple, he wants to play rook e4 and right now this pawn will be undefended and after picking up this pawn, this pawn will be weak as well and this is game lost for white. So that is the reason why this move was played. Rook d5 was played now for white which is a huge mistake because Emoritate finds a great move, rook e1 check. You are now forced to take this rook and after h takes on g2, white decided to resign because there is no way you will stop this pawn from promoting to a queen and Emory Tate is an international master who will be able to finish this game and win this game with a queen against a rook endgame and this is how this game ended and this is all I have prepared for you today hopefully you guys enjoyed both of these games if you did please leave a comment like and share the video because it helps me a lot also let me know your impressions and your thoughts about these two games and also if you have some suggestions for the next games please let me know that as well I always read my comments and I always take them into consideration whenever you comment anything on my channel so thank you so much for watching and we will see each other in the next video bye bye